so we have been talking about this. Now, according to NASA, this is an eclipse of the sun, of the moon passing in front of the satellite, SDO, which is about, I believe, 220,000 miles out in space above the equator. Okay, makes sense to me. No question here. Here we have the moon not quite covering the sun, but nevertheless, this is the moon. Very clean edges, right? Now here we have a sequence of an Earth eclipse and I guess that's another one. I mean, again, it's coming from two different directions. But we're told that this is an eclipse. We're told this is eclipse. Okay. So just so we have an understanding, kind of the perspective, And this is when we get a lunar eclipse. Here's an eclipse. As you can see, it has a complete symmetry in all wavelengths, as it should be. This is Mercury. Kind of gives you perspective. These are from last September. A year ago. Again, very odd. This is kind of what depiction of how the moon is to the SDO. And here is that picture. I don't know. We're going to look at some equations that's going to question this. So according to NASA, this is what we're seeing. Again, according to NASA, I'll see if I can expand this out. But there you go. This is what they're telling us. This is what we're seeing. Okay. I have no doubt that this is, in fact, what we're seeing. This, I absolutely get. This, I'm not so sure of. And again, this is a picture of the SDO. So we can see what we're getting. I think this kind of brings it into perspective as well. And here are a series of frames of a lunar transit in the different light spectrums. So it appears to me it's coming in here, it's here moves across here and then exit here and you know I still don't see how the one that we're seeing from east to west and then uh, south to north this is an animation showing how a celestial object is not casting a shadow it's actually going in front of the camera I get that what we're talking about is anecdotal evidence showing a diminished output of solar energy. Now we have, as I said, anecdotal evidence that would show a connection. This is just one of many reports that we are getting 
all around the world. I want to thank Dave for sending this to us. Um, in fact, we're going to be doing some more with Dave and really getting into this in more depth because this is happening with solar owners everywhere. There is something happening, folks. So here we're going to be dealing with some science. Why are we seeing a decrease energy output? Now, I have heard and read that there is a change taking place. Now, I know mainstream science is not going to admit to this. And actually, for us to be able to go and begin to measure solar output and have a database that would actually show that, um, I haven't located yet. So here we're dealing with some equations. So again, we're putting this out as a theory, not as a fact. So follow along. So suppose the sun, before acquiring a new atmosphere, had a radius, right, which we see here. And you can see the equation for the charge. By the way, how would we know how to measure the sun? I mean, seriously. Have you ever actually taken the time to measure the sun each day to really be able to say, is it gotten larger? I mean, if it had gotten larger, you would never know. I wouldn't know. I don't take those type of readings. By the way, again, stop and ponder this about the reality that we're in. Our sun is in a constant state of sunrise and sunset. I mean, wrap your head around that a little bit. So anyway, you're seeing the equations. And what we're dealing with again is understanding there was a new gaseous atmosphere. How would we begin to figure out that equation? Again, I am not qualified to be teaching this. It is our hope that we will one day be able to bring our professor out because as you can see, um, the individual knows their stuff way smarter than I am. And all I'm doing here for you is giving you the opportunity to begin to think about other possibilities to what we're seeing. And again, I am not going to explain the math. No, no. Not qualified. And that is one pull that I'm not going to swim in. But you know what? I love it because to have the professor actually explain this in a classroom setting would give us all an immense education. Now, I'm just slowly going through here so you can see it. I'm not even going to read it. I mean, the work here is stellar. And it is up for debate. Anyone who wants to come up with a different theory, different formula, let's hear it. This is really... What I would really like to have here is a forum where all people can come together and not be intimidated, not to have just, you know, people who just fail to understand how to communicate to others, where we can actually have this. So as you can see, I do believe that there is more than enough anecdotal evidence to show that there is something going on with our star. Again, this has been shown um, by Steve 
and by Chris. But we're monitoring this. Now that we're aware, we're not going to give up on this. We're going to continue to pursue this. I believe that there are equations and readings that we can get off the sun to begin to either further the hypotheses that there is a diminished effect of solar output taking place. And I don't believe that it is so outrageous to cast dispersions and ridicule upon the curiosity of looking at this, particularly when we can go through here and begin to plot. You know, we're simple observers. And that's what scientists are. Now, you can go on to school. You can learn the disciplines of those particular sciences. And I admire that. Listen, I hire people. And I hire them based on their education, their work history. And so when I begin to see people that take their own time to go out and then where you have a tenure professor, and not just one, there's several, and there's more coming, meteorologist, we're going to begin to have the disciplines to show you that when we're coming up with this, we want to have the science that will either just say that we're just so far off or that we're onto something. In many, many universities, to let you know, uh, I'm a big fan of the Big Bang Theory. And so when you think about institutions like Caltech, Mike Brown, some of the best minds in astrophysics, and that's what they get paid to do theoretical physics. And one of the principles that you understand, particularly in quantum theory, there are no absolutes. So we're just simply observing something that we think is taking place more than just an eclipse. And I invite you to join us in this journey. For those of you who are just enthusiasts of space, weather, Nibiru, end time prophecy, there's a place for you. There's a place for everyone. So that's what my hope was to do on this video, was to show you that there really are some very smart people so that whatever is happening to our sun, it affects all of us. And, you know, Tesla was ridiculed in his time, as was many of the great minds. And just because something may seem totally preposterous, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. We all have, I believe, the right to have an opinion and a thought. I happen to believe that there's something going on with our star. I think there's something going on with our solar system. I think there's something going on with our galaxy. We don't stop and consider the fact that there, we are just a small, very insignificant cog to our galaxy called the Milky Way. And folks, if there is, for instance, a black hole that can suddenly appear out of nowhere, and let's say it's just beyond the reach of our visual acuity, and if you're of the camp that you think that we are unique and that we're the only life, intelligent life in the universe, fine. I happen to think that the universe is full of life, far, far older than what we can even imagine, and that the races are beyond the sands of the sea. I believe that our sun is not unlike countless billions others. 
Now, just because we have accepted the fact that this has been a sum that they're estimating in a certain age, that could be wrong. But we're going to stay on it. Count on it. All right. Be good to one another.